Well, hello there. I'm with one of the residents from the River Valley Park. And what's your name? Diane Ross. Hi, Diane. Well, welcome to Sue Online. Uh, you've just been in a meeting with Michael Mantha yes. and uh, several of the residents. So how are you feeling right now? I'm feeling really good after this meeting. Um, okay. We went in there and we heard truth today. Okay. Um, not leaving, feeling that we haven't gotten any answers. We've gotten a lot of answers today and we still have hope okay. that our park is going to um, continue. It's going to continue? Yeah. So what were some of the things that were shared with you that gives you this kind of hope? Um, exactly what the AMPH's intentions are. Right. Their next intentions and the MOE. Okay. And where the owner has been at with um, with the MOE and the APH and with Mike Manthus and um, we we just know that Mike Manthus is here he's gonna help us okay they're gonna do everything they can to help us okay. and um, the future still looks bright and ways for us so okay. we just have to hang on to the hope and hopefully we'll, our homes will be safe all right so, it, so when you learned about APH and what their um, intentions are, what did you have anything specific shared with what that um, might be? Yes, because we weren't sure of um, what they meant by starting to give penalties. Okay. And it was explained to us today how that is going to work and the process of it. Okay. And um, so, so it's another answered question for all of us. And so these penalties were specifically against the owners, not against yes, the individual against residents? Yes, against the owners for not complying to the order to fix the sewage system okay. is my understanding. Um, so we, yeah, um, we've been scared that our park was just gonna close. Yeah, and somebody come in overnight. Things would be and, shut down, yes. Yeah. And not, sh not knowing if we should be packing and leaving or if we should stay and hang in with all the hope, you know. Right, and yeah. I know I'm gonna stay and I'm gonna just uh, keep praying that right. it's gonna get fixed. Yeah. And someone's gonna, someone, is going to be here to take care of us to help us through this. Okay, and that's Mr. And Mantha. I'm feeling with right. Mike Mathis today that we are going to be taken care of. Okay, thank you for talking with me, Diane. Thank What's you. it been like over the last several months for you, like being in this state of transition all the time? Not sure it's, if you have one foot in or one foot out. It's it's a really horrible. You have many many sleepless nights, many teary eyed days. Um, I have boxes that half packed. Right. I've got. 10 gallons of paint sitting in the closet, um, materials to go ahead and do upgrades and repairs to my trailer. And I wake up in the morning and I don't know if I should pick up a paintbrush or start packing another box. Right. It's been very hard yes. not knowing uh, what the outcome is going to be and yeah. being told that we need to look for a new place to live. You just don't know. Right. And it's a horrible, horrible way to have to live. Yes. There's no peace. Yeah no peace and like I said we just have to hang on to that hope right and so you don't have to pack up the boxes right now you still have I, I'm feeling today that I'm not gonna have to pack any more boxes Good. and I'm I'm not going to I was gonna actually uh, put my stuff in storage end of this month and start right. moving on but I'm feeling now that I need to stay okay I need to stay through it stay through it okay yeah. well thank you so much for talking we wish you all the best we'll keep following this all the way through and uh, wish you guys all the best. Thank you. Thanks, Dan. Thank you so much. Uh, well, welcome to Sue Online, Mr. Mantha. We're here up at the St. Mark's Anglican Church and you've just hosted a meeting for the tenants of River, or the homeowners for River Valley Park. Can you talk to me about the meeting? How did it go? What's your impression of how things went? Well, uh, there was a lot of confusion as far as the process, uh, what decisions were made, the information. So today was an opportunity for all of us to having the same information and getting all on the same page, having all the same information, uh, putting some of the uh, myths and rumors aside so we could have uh, a wholesome discussions of what has happened up to now, uh, the information that we have now, and um, how this may be proceeding. Um, the good, the bad, and uh, the worse. Okay. And uh, basically, you know, I've, I've indicated to everybody we should be prepared for the worst okay. is what we should be preparing for. Uh, the unfortunate part is as everybody has felt the same frustration as I have um, through the lack of information and communication, 
So has the government agencies with Algoma Public Health and the Ministry of Environment and Climate Change. Uh, but until we hear more uh, from the uh, park owner in regards to how they're going to address this problem, if they're going to address this problem, and when they're going to address this problem, it's hard for us to taking a course of action uh, as, 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 as the issue continues to build up. So talk to me about some of the rumors. What are people sharing with you that is not true, that's out there? Well, what, what you just who's been responsible for what? Okay. Um, so uh, the Ministry of Environment and Climate Change, their responsibility in this is to assure that for the residents themselves, they have a proper operating sewage system. Okay. That's their role. That's what they care about to making sure that there are no environmental concerns and making sure that there's an operating system in place. They've been diligent um, as far as uh, what they needed to do, they've been more than accommodating. Okay. That's their role. Algoma Public Health is exactly that. They're making sure that there is no public concerns in regards to uh, what's happening with, uh, with the park. And there was evidence that there are some concerns. Okay. They're taking their role seriously as well, which is why they've issued the order. The order was effective that the park needed to be closed uh, by the, the, uh, the park owner by May the 1st, and it is not. So now uh, they've done their due diligence, they've done a site inspection, and now they're going to be living up to what that order was. Okay. Um, what is going to be proceeding? More than likely, they're going to be putting it in order with the courts. The courts are going to be calling the owner into the courts as to why he hasn't lived up to that order. Okay. Now, Mr. Mantha, can we talk about the owner? Because I'm understanding that uh, one, the, one of the owners that I had originally talked to is no longer part of the partnership of the ownership for River Valley. Is that correct? Yeah, yeah. The, the initial owner that I had been involved with and I had been in communication with has, has withdrawn due to health reasons. And, you know, we, we wish him, you know, the best. Nobody wants to wish ill will to anybody. You know, right. I, I hope him a speedy recovery and um, uh, that he recovers well. There is a new um, a chair to the corporation that has stepped in. Um, and he's working with some of their family members as far as with communicating with some of the agencies and the homeowners as well. Okay. And the, the piece with the MOECC, did the capacity study that was initially been, was, that was requested in the fall, did that get completed? Do you know the... Well, it's, it's still a work. It's, it's in, it's in um, I guess the best way to answer that is in, it's in an approved draft format okay. so part of the ECA is the environmental compliance right. application yes but there's also the FE which is a financial assurance so due to legislation not only do you need a plan of implementation for a new system but you also need a period of time which is a three-year period of operating costs and also decommissioning costs that are considered into that okay. that's all part of that process so one of the reasons why we're still in a draft format is because of the, fi the, the financial difficulties uh, for the, the, the park owner to securing those funds. Are there still some remaining questions in regards to the levels that are going to be released within the new system? I think there still is, but I don't think it's something that's very drastic that couldn't be overcome. Okay. The biggest issue and the biggest barrier is securing the, uh, the financial uh, for, for the, uh, the new investment in the, in the uh, sewage system. All right, thank you. And do you have any like a ballpark figure as to what that might look like? Well, there, there, the the new owner actually had a meeting with the MOECC about a week and a half ago to two weeks, right. and he had indicated to them that they were considering another option, a cheaper option. The Ministry of Environment said, "Great, okay. come back to us when you have uh, have it." Um, so I was provided with the information as to what that new company was and what the system was and I followed it up with them and once they received the actual numbers as far as the amount of water that needs to be uh, treated uh, and the levels, um, the cost was very comparative to what was already in the draft format and being approves, approved and what was new and being considered. So the cost still ranges between anywhere between 200000 to about $260,000 plus the amount identified that is required through the financial assurance, and that ballpark is about $85,000. Oh, wow. That's a substantial amount of money to be able to come up with. So today, the, the residents are leaving here. They're living their life sort of day by day. Is that basically the premise for them right now? Yeah, it is. Until we know uh, what the, uh, the, uh, the park owner is going to do, um, we remain frustrated. 
right. is, is the message that I got from uh, the homeowners here. Scared, mm -hmm. um, I've advised them to prepare for the worse. Right. Uh, prepare, look at your options, uh, seek out some, uh, some accommodations, because quite frankly, I don't know uh, what decisions the uh, park owner is going to do or not do. Mm -hmm. um, I can't, I, I just don't have that information because as they are frustrated, I'm not getting that information either. And neither is APH and neither is MOECC. Mm -hmm. So I've told them to prepare for the worst, look at options, find some family just in case. Um, and there's a lot of uh, pet owners that are there as well. That's right. And that's the other part is, you know, you've got to find some accommodations for them as well. Right. So um, we've, uh, we've indicated to them that if they're looking for some numbers and looking for some supports, we have that available at my office to try and help them as best as we can. Well, thank you very much for your time, Mr. Mantha, and uh, we'll continue to watch this story. Thank you very Appreciate much. It. My pleasure. Thank you. Well, I'd like to welcome Faith Hackney to Sue Online. Uh, Faith is one of the homeowners in River Valley Park and has just been part of a meeting of homeowners uh, that was hosted by Michael Mantha. So Faith, can you talk to me about the meeting? What were what are some of your reflections on what took place today? Um, that Mike is, he's been working very hard um, to try and keep us in our homes. Uh, there's been very little communication between himself and the homeowner, or the owner of the park, um, as well with the homeowners and the owner of the park. And that's the difficulty right now that we're having. Right. Now, have you, did you hear that they're being, he's being fined? Do you know if the fine has been enacted? Um, I believe as of May 1st, he has been fined $5,000 a day okay. um, by the Algoma Public Health. I don't believe that there's been any fines um, put in place by the ministry as of yet. Okay. So, yeah, 5000 a day so far by the Algoma Public Health. So, Faith, can you talk to me? What's it been like over the last winter now that May 1st was getting closer and closer and now we're here and it's... Uh, what is it like for you day by day? Well, over the winter we were kind of relieved. We were hoping that they were actually working on it, and that's what we were led to believe, okay. that the owners were working on, on it. And then we find out in late March that, in actuality, the previous owner has taken a step back, okay. and uh, there's been another owner put in place. Right. Um, so uh, with lack of communication, maybe lack of understanding, it's been kind of put on hold yet again. So it's, it's very mm. frustrating. So are you thinking lack of understanding on language or on the technicalities of the uh, environmental assessment? I guess may, maybe a little bit of language with Jazz Beer, who is the okay. current owner. Um, okay. And uh, maybe lack, they're, they're just not proactive. They're just not, uh, they're sitting back and waiting for something to happen or waiting till the last minute. And that's been um, what's, I guess, been done, the consensus with them f through the whole process. They wait till the last minute. Okay. And that's, it plays on your nerves. So they haven't been proactively coming and sharing developments with the homeowners directly? No, nothing. Okay, so basically what you're hearing, what you're learning today came through Michael Mantha and not from the homeowners yes. at all. So, All right, well, thank you very much for your time, Faith, and we'll, we'll stay on top of this story. Thank you very and much. any developments, yeah, well, good luck with everything, Faith. We're thinking about Chetsu Online. Thank you.